You're listening to The Scrimmage with Daniel Hargrove and Justin Domashevitz. Zach Ryder, who is our Ole Penn Real Estate Athlete of the Week. Again, she was named by SB Life, SB Live as the Senior Athlete of the Year for Girls Sports in the 1A ranks. And heck of a career. And again, like most of these, I see basketball. So that's what I watch. And I know that she is a dominant basketball player. I didn't know that she was. I guess I assume that she was a really good volleyball player. A lot of times you see that translation between basketball and volleyball great athletes who are also tall girls tend to be good at volleyball as and well. jump well yeah. yeah but also a very successful track and field athlete as well the team of realtors at Oli Penn real estate wish you and your family good health during this stay home stay safe time their team has health and safety measures in place to protect you and everyone involved in the process if you're thinking about selling your home now is a great time there are more buyers than available homes. Many homes are still receiving multiple offers and are selling for above asking price. Oli Penn Real Estate will help you put the most money possible in your pocket in less time without the hassle. Visit sellmyharborhome.com to get your home market ready. The Oli Penn team is ready to work for you. So let's get into it. Her senior year highlights they list as she received all state honors in volleyball as an honorable mention. And in basketball, All-State first team, which we already knew. She led Elma's volleyball team in kills with 180 and kill percentage of 47%. I assume that's pretty good. I assume that's pretty good. I was actually hoping that, you know, since you grew up in Hawaii, that you might I don't know anything about the kill percentage. Okay. I know when I was covering um, volleyball for the newspaper, that kills was one of the few stats that we kept track of, and that was often the the person who had the most kills was the best player or one of the best players on the team. But I don't know about kill percentage. Okay. Sounds high. It does sound high. Almost 50%. She was selected to the all evergreen conference first team for a second consecutive season in basketball. She was a, well, she's a six foot two center. We already knew that again, this article, probably a little bit for people out of the area too. She was voted the one, a evergreen conference player of the year for back to back seasons she averaged 18 points, 10.8 rebounds, and 5.4 blocks per game. Just ridiculous numbers there. Led the Eagles to the state tournament for the second straight season. This time they were defeated by Freeman in the opening round. I was there. That was very tough to watch. She is a, and this is, she was also a projected contender in the 1A ranks in the shot put and discus, which I didn't know. So a thrower in those events as well. Her senior track and field season, of course, canceled because of COVID-19. Rough. Now, you start to look at her career accomplishments. In basketball, she finished with 1,160 points. Anytime you get into the 1,000 point, yep. point range. 1,000-point club's a big deal. It is a big deal. And it takes longevity mm -hmm. as well as scoring a lot of points while you're playing. Yeah. Like, you have to be able to do both. Most of the kids who make the 1,000-point club played at least some as a freshman. Mm-hmm. You have to almost to get there. She had 659 rebounds, 283 block shots for her basketball career. Wow. Was a three-time All 1A Evergreen League selection in basketball and a two-time 1A State. She was an honorable mention as a junior, and then she was first team All State as a senior. She was on the Olympians All Area Girls Basketball first team in 2018 and 19. Didn't know that. A three-time All 1A Evergreen League selection in volleyball. She was first team in her final two seasons at Middle Blocker. She was All State honorable mention as a junior and senior in track and field. She had four state podium finishes in the shot put. She took eighth place twice in 2018 and 2019. So as a sophomore and a junior, and in discus, sixth place in 2018 and fifth in 2019. So also her sophomore and junior seasons. Her personal best throws were 37 and 11 and a half in the shot put and 119 and four in the discus. And also 
Another thing we like to mention, excellent student with a 385 GPA, as well as a 35 GPA in running start at South Puget Sound Community College. That's pretty impressive. I mean, all the resume all up and down is pretty amazing. Obviously, the one that we tend to gravitate towards the most is basketball. And you mentioned when they lost in the playoffs her senior year, which was just this past season. Correct me if I'm wrong, because you paid closer attention to that one, I think, than I did. But wasn't that team really injured at the end of the year like they only had six players left at the end or something basically because they yeah. were really good i remember them as being really good and then they just ended up not being healthy at down the stretch yeah they suffered a bunch of injuries that they were working through i mean they already kind of ran seven players that they really like to go with most of them seniors mm-hmm. if not all of them seniors and then their point guard kaylee johnson got hurt I mean, she was already coming off a pretty bad knee injury in soccer season. And then somehow, I mean, it seemed pretty miraculous that she was even to play. And then right before the Monty game, went up and like hip bumped a teammate. I'm not even sure if it, that's what it was. Like it was something like in announcements, I believe. And her knee gave. Mm. And it was one of those weird situations where they actually had to be like, hey, she's in our starting roster, but she can't start. So they had to go and tell the officials and score and everything. And so it was just a big time loss for that program and so that was that was hard to see because that was an extremely talented team that actually made a deeper run in the state tournament the previous year when they were all juniors yeah and so that was that was a rough thing to see for sure another thing i wanted to mention because i thought this was kind of cool she volunteered for a local charity to fill up backpacks for homeless people says i believe for the last three years or something like that too so that homeless backpack charity in elma is pretty cool. The place I work um, did some work with them several years ago, and it's a it's a really great program. I don't know um, like even how you get in touch with it or anything, but basically they provide backpacks full of food and things that they need for kids who are like essentially couch hopping um, for mm-hmm. anybody who doesn't have um, a place to call home. It's a pretty amazing program because those kids with you know the adversity that they faced in life are still you know, making the effort to go to school and keep their lives on track. So yeah. that's pretty cool. I I feel like that's a cool, um, that's a great charity for her to identify as one to participate in. Absolutely. Pretty awesome. Jalen Sackrider, our Oli Penn Athlete of the Week, and just covering her on the court the last few years has been, it's been really fun. Uh, I got a chance to interview her a couple times too. Very humble kid who loved to talk about how her teammates helped her in the game and you know it'd be a game where she'd have like 25 points and 16 rebounds and five blocks and she'd be like yeah my teammates did really good and I'm like yeah well I mean you pretty much dominated the game but she was always the first one to start passing it off to you know who else deserved attention as well and I mean two of our favorite kids of this class I feel like in basketball this year where Zoe Hutchings and Jalen Sackrider Mm -hmm. have been two of our favorite players, and they both play the center position on two rival schools, those battles have been so much fun to watch. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's when you start to see the best in both of them, too, is when they, you know, it's always fun to see someone put up crazy numbers where they block like six or seven shots because nobody is tall enough to compete. But then when they start to face somebody who has that next level talent right because i think zoe is six three is yeah that right yeah they're both they're both really tall yeah and zoe's gonna go play for idaho state and Jalen. this according to this she is signed to play at the at evergreen state college so they're both moving on to play basketball at the college ranks that's so amazing like not only just to be able to move on and play college at the it, it's hard to get into college basketball especially for anything outside of a community college but especially as a center or a post from uh from a small town you know a lot of our schools around here that we just don't end up having a lot of height and so we don't see a lot of times if you're a post player at one of our local schools, you don't get to go play college basketball because you were probably, you know, four to six inches shorter than the guys that are going to be playing post or the girls that are going to be playing post at that point. So that's pretty cool that they both have um, that ability. And you've watched Jalen more than I have. You mentioned Zoe as well. 
Zoe is an incredibly skilled player. Like you don't get to just be tall and strong and go play college basketball. Yeah. So I'm going to assume with Jalen, it's kind of the same thing. Like there, it's not just I'm six foot two and athletic. That that doesn't get you into college basketball. You have to have a little bit more than that. I remember watching. It was kind of the similar thing as you saw their games evolve from just being like tall and athletic mm-hmm. to then also doing things like hit mid-range jumpers yeah and with Jalen it was she found a mid-range jumper where you know teams would pack down in the inside and all of a sudden she'd be able to step out and hit a jumper and then I watched I can't remember if it was the district title game that she had this last year but I think it was something like 32 points And I think it was either her last bucket or second to last bucket. She stepped out, had a ball bounce out to her, and she drilled a corner three. And I was just like, okay. I mean, she can pretty much do it all at this point. And everything was going in. And there was some just ridiculous shots that she was putting up too. So absolutely a a fun player to cover. And I think absolutely warranted of being the girls 1A athlete of the year. It's a cool honor. And that's your Athlete of the Week from Oli Penn Real Estate, Jalen Sackrider.